All right, so this, this page is about mapping a figure onto itself and also performing multiple transformations. All right, when we were mapping, like this question says, what transformation would map the figure onto itself? When mapping is slightly different from regular transformations because in regular transformations, it matters whether or not this coordinate, let's say I call that coordinate A. If I were rotated around, whether or not I landed right back on coordinate A. In mapping, those points don't really matter. Mapping only means that we want to reflect it, or translate it, or transform it, so you get the exact same image. So, what I mean is this. If I drew a line straight down the y-axis and made it reflect about that line, it would be the same image. So I could say, reflect about the y-axis. And for that matter, if I drew a line straight down the x-axis and I reflect about that line, it will work. So I could say reflect about the x-axis. And another way I could think about it is if I use this point as the origin and I rotated it, 90 degrees doesn't give me the same picture. If I rotate it 180, I have the same picture. So if I rotate, 180 degrees about the origin, it will work. All right, so from there, that's pretty much all. I can't really, I'm not sure if I drew this diagonal there, would it really match up perfectly there? So only those three places. Now right, let's look at this next one. All right, in this picture, now it really rotates, it really reflects about the line y equals four. Like if I drew a line right there, I reflected about y equals four, it would be a map. So it says what transformation would map it onto itself. So I reflected about that line, I get the same picture and it maps onto itself, make it look more like a four. And for that matter, I reflected about this line. That's line y x equals two. So I reflect about x equals two. It will map onto itself. And if I took this point, which would be the center of it, and I rotated it 180 degrees, I get the same image. So um, if I rotate around that point. So if I rotate 180 degrees about the point positive 2, positive 4. I get the same image. So I think that's about all. There's no other places you can actually map it onto itself in that picture. All right, look at a new one. Look at this parallelogram. I right, said, so what, 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 what transformation would map it onto itself? All right, I could try to draw a line here, but if I folded it down that line, it wouldn't really work. Like this point wouldn't lie in the right place. It'd probably lie like right here. And if I went straight down the middle of it, it wouldn't really work either because the opposite sides don't really match up perfectly. So the only thing I could do is I could find out what might be the center of it. And if I rotated it 180 degrees about that, it still slants downward and so forth. So if I rotate 180 degrees about that point, it should be the same. So this only has one answer. So you could rotate 180 degrees about the point that looks to be negative 2, positive 4. All right, look at the next one. It said, what transformation would map it onto itself? So clearly I can see a line here would map it onto itself. So I could say it reflects about x equals negative 2. About x equals negative 2. And if I looked at it this way, and I could reflect it about the y-axis. I'm sorry, it's the x-axis. So I reflect about the x-axis. So x. And there may be a way I can draw a line here and make it reflect onto itself.
Not for certain though, but it looks like if I drew a line there, reflecting onto itself. So that line looks to have a y-intercept of two and a slope of one. So it could reflect about the line y equals to one x plus two. And if you want to reflect about another line, you reflect about this line. That looks to be y equals negative one x. Subtract two. We don't really use y equals x and y equals negative x. So if it's not about those, you really don't use it. But technically, you could find others. But if it's not y equals x or y equals negative x, like through the origin that way or the other, we really don't use those other ones in geometry. You may use it in some higher class. So these we don't really consider. And it doesn't reflect by those. So we only say x equals negative 2 and the x-axis. All right, so this one says, what kind of rotation would map this pentagon onto itself? So if we looked at this, if we looked at this. At this time, you should be with. All right, so look at this pentagon. If I rotate it at 90 degrees, it doesn't really look like the same shape, like the coordinates kind of off a bit. So it's not really at 90 degrees. But if I knew the angle was each of these angles there, I could rotate it in such a way that I could make it flatten out and be the, be the right picture. So basically, um, if I took 360 degrees, why? Because all these exterior angles here add up to be 360. If I took all these angles up and I divided them by the number of angles, it's one, two, three, four, five. That would give me 72 degrees. So if I rotated it, not quite 90, but 72 degrees, I wind up having the picture that I want. I wind up having the picture I'm looking for. So, so what kind of rotation? The answer is a 72 degree rotation. And I think it counts as clockwise or counterclockwise, and you get the exact same image. All right, last question is this. The question says, if you can see this, the coordinates of triangle, make it look a little bigger. All right, so the question says, the coordinates of triangle J, R, B are given there. What are the coordinates for its vertices after the translation of two units to the right and one unit down and reflection over their x-axis. All right, so apparently this is point J. Apparently point R is at negative five, negative one. Hi. All right, so that's J and that's R. And point B is negative five, negative four. That'd be point B. All right, so it's first the translation is Two units to the right and one unit um, down. One unit down. So we'll go two units to the right, it puts me over one, two, one unit down, puts me here. And that will be J prime. And this goes over two units to the right, one, two, one unit down, this will be B prime. And then one, two, one down, give me R prime. I'll get this new shape. So that's the first translation. And then we have a second translation that is reflecting it over the y-axis. So we have to figure out how to reflect that over the y-axis. So when we reflect it over the y-axis, reflection over the y-axis, you have to remember the rule for reflection over y-axis, which is y-axis, Reflection is negative x, y. So I'm take each of these coordinates. R is now at, R prime is now at negative three, negative two. And B prime is at negative three, negative five. And J prime is at positive one, negative five. 
So, if I'm going to reflect it over the y-axis, our double prime will wind up in positive 3, negative 2. B double prime would be at positive 3, positive, negative 5. And J double prime would be at negative 1, negative 5. All right, so from there, if I had a different color, I'd use it. I guess I could get a different color. So if I apply to each point from here, R is at positive 3, negative 2. So that's positive 3, negative 2 would be here for R. Um, B double prime would be at um, positive 3, negative 5. So that would be here. And J double prime would be at negative 1, negative 5. So that would be here. This would be our new shape. This would be R double prime, B double prime, J double prime. So that is a combination of transformations. Anyway, that's all I have. Good luck.